Hey guys, check out this pet portrait I'm working on. So originally I was going to film this as a time lapse video and then I thought maybe since I think all my pet portrait videos are time lapse that maybe a few comments might be helpful for those of you interested in art or or like watching painting in real time. So this is Darcy. Uh, she's a friend of mine's fuzzy loved one and I'm writing love on the canvas like I always do before any painting I start. I just think it's a great way to start. Uh, that was with a watercolor pencil that'll just sort of dissolve into the pigment. And there's the photo of Darcy I have as a reference that my friend sent. This is just a kneaded eraser. Um, you kind of knead it, stretch it, pull it, and then it'll lighten the charcoal pencil that I drew on the canvas um, so I can see where I'm going. Because when I paint a pet portrait, sometimes you get a little lost in the details and you need, I always say, a map of where I'm going. So I'm just lightening it right now so it's not quite so strong. Oh, this is a five by seven canvas. It's an inch and a half deep. And now I'm just painting the background in some colors that'll pick up the color of her eyes. Um, I'm using raw sienna, uh, burnt umber, and I don't think that's red ox. I think that's burnt sienna. Oh, and then a uh, Naples yellow there. And I got a little bit of uh, medium orange up on the top of my palette there, just in case I need to brighten up the color a little bit. And then I'm using, oh, it looks like it's a filbert brush. I don't know if it's quite a half inch. It looks like it might be about a half inch. So you can see painting isn't, real-time painting isn't the speediest thing. Um, I've got an art table for painting small paintings. Um, I have a big easel for when I paint big paintings. And then I've got a little clamp with an arm that I've got my cell phone hooked into. So when I bump the table, you'll see the video shake a little bit because the table's shaking. So what I'm thinking about here a little bit is keeping the bottom and the corners darker. Um, it just is a, an easy way to keep the viewer focused into the more of the center of the painting. Of course, this is a portrait, so the eyes and the nose will definitely draw your attention. But I'm just being mindful of keeping things focused in the right place. I think for me, painting the background is, is one of the most relaxing things. You're just playing with color and brush strokes. Oh, I should mention, these are acrylic paints. Uh, they're heavy body professional paints. Um, I like acrylics because they dry so much faster than oils. I think they're much more archi archival than oil paintings. Um, they're not going to crack, the oil isn't going to yellow, you know, it just, I mean, I, I know the old masters used oil, but they didn't have acrylics back then, so I, I just love acrylics. They do amazing things. Okay, since the eyes and the nose are important, I'm making sure I get those in, get them at least sort of mocked in and in the correct spots. I'll go back towards the end and brighten up the eyes. This is just a little knife brush I'm using. I don't know if it's even an eighth inch wide. It's, it goes to a point like a knife. So my palette is a styrofoam eight inch plate. Um, I like it because it's really easy to mix the paint colors on. Um, it doesn't dry out the paints, 
And then I will mist the paints with just a little bit of water, especially in the summer when fans are going, or actually in the winter when there's not much humidity in my studio. And then I will put this plate in a gallon Ziploc bag just with a little more misted water. Because acrylics are water-based paint, it'll help preserve them for, gosh, maybe weeks. Usually I only need it for about a week. Um, I think that's just a really neat trick. You can also um, add moisture by adding matte medium or gloss medium, but that will also affect the transparency of your paint. Um, it'll make it more transparent. Um, just misting it with a little bit of water, I think, is just a really neat trick. Oh, I suppose I should mention, you don't want to put too much water in acrylic paint because it'll break down the polymers. I think that's the right word that they're made of. Um, and then there's a chance that the paint won't even stick to each other. But misting is totally fine. I mean, it is a water-based paint, so. So what I'm doing here is, um, Rather than just painting straight out of the two black and gray, because this is a black and white dog, um, a lot of times the cool side or the shadow side of your image will have blues in it, or even other colors. So I'm just using a little Prussian blue and some black and make, mixing a blue-gray just to get some more depth to the painting. Um, I heard an artist talk once about how there are living shadows. There's, there's color in shadows. Sometimes people think of shadows as just being gray. And you can tell I'm thinking, because I'm not painting a lot here. <laughs> I'm looking at the shapes of my reference photo. I'm looking about where I might want to put the bluish colors. And plus, I thought it was going to be a time lapse, so this would be speeded up a bit. This part of a painting usually goes pretty slow because I'm just looking at shapes, as I mentioned, and I just want to get things right. Um, brush stroke direction does matter, but this is a very short haired dog, so you can also get away with painting just the shapes some. I'll come back with some more brush strokes when I get towards the end that are for direction. All right, we jump forward just a little bit here, and you can see it's starting to take shape. And especially uh, when you video or photograph a little painting like this, it kind of smooths it out a little bit. What I see is a little rougher than what you guys see, but that's not a problem. Just an interesting little fact. I'm still using that little knife brush and things are still going pretty slow at this point. Okay, look what a little bit of time and a little bit of painting in the shapes and the shadows does. Darcy is starting to come together. I always get excited when it starts looking good. I haven't changed, of course my hands over it, but I haven't changed the eyes or the nose um, since I first painted them. 
what you, what you kind of want to do or what I want to do is get one layer of paint down and then see where I want to make things lighter, darker, more detail, less detail. Because sometimes you, I, like I might paint underneath the nose and it gets too dark or it's not dark enough. So it's good just to kind of get one layer of paint down and then go back and with another layer. It gives it depth and it'll give it uh, a little bit more realism too. Oh, a little more progress. So here I'm painting, I, you cannot tell, that's actually a very light gray. It looks white on camera. And actually I'm thinking it's kind of light, so I added a little darker gray there. Oh, I actually changed where I was going to go. <laughs> So here, now that I'm painting more of the neck and chest, I'm paying a little more attention to a brush stroke. And I went a little too far over onto the background than I wanted, so I just took a clean brush. And the background's been dry for quite a while, probably a couple days. So I can easily just wash off what I didn't like there and start again. So guys, tell me what you think. Do you like uh, when you see me paint in real time? Do you like the time lapse better? Because either way, in a video, you can stop it, um, back up, you know, see what I did, see what you think. Uh, let me know in the comments if you like the real time better, or the time lapse better, or you just want to see more of both. I really love the challenge of painting um, pet portraits. I like to call them fuzzy loved ones, furry loved ones. Um, and then I'm also honored because it's really important to their family members. So I think it's just a neat thing to do. So here is another jump forward, and you can see my brush strokes are looser on Darcy's body, um, and you can, I can make a lot more progress quicker because it's not the detail of the face. And I'm adding, I went back to add some more gray in her uh, white patch on her chest. And then I believe she's got a flowered collar on, but in the photo, it's just little spots of color. And I paint, when I paint a pet portrait, I paint from one photo that um, my client sends. I can't combine photos and figure out how that's going to look. And it'll look more, it looks much more realistic if I'm painting from one photo. And so then recreating those values and those angles and the shapes. Um, combining photos, it just starts to look a little goofy. I'm getting a little fussy here. I think I could have used a bigger brush. But it doesn't matter. I mean, you use whatever brush you want. So 
So things are just looking more refined. I've gone back and smoothed out um, the brush strokes in her body and then added some um, looser, stronger ones to indicate fur. Um, here I'm getting down to the nitty gritty of lighter, darker details. It's really starting to look yummy. I'm definitely on layer two here, if you guys were wondering. Oh, notice her eyes are better. I've added some highlight. I've added more color. Um, I strengthened the black areas. They're starting to really look good with that background. Thanks so much for watching, everybody. I'm pretty much done. For more information on portraits, AnnieTro.com.